My name is Sid Cairns. I have been a volunteer at the Old Low Light Heritage Centre for two years. I want to talk today about the legacy James Knott left before his death, which was to get people out of the slums of North Shields and into modern affordable housing. This, of course, was the million brick building James Knott Memorial Flats. James Knott was born in Howden, Wall's End, on the 31st of January 1855. The eldest of ten children, James was educated at the Scotch School in North Shields. He left school at 14 and worked as a shipping clerk at Newcastle Quayside. At the age of 19, he became a ship broker. In 1878, he married Margaret Annie Garbett. They had three children, all boys, Thomas, Henry and James. James bought his first ship, a collier brig named Pearl, at a cost of £186. His first steamship was bought in 1881, called the Saxon Prince. By 1883, he had added a further eight ships to the fleet. By 1886, he owned 17 ships and his first tanker. In 1895, he set up the Prince Line, which was the third largest shipping line in the world. Most of the ships were built by Short Brothers. During World War I, James lost both his youngest sons, Henry and James. In 1929, his wife Margaret died at the age of 74. James himself died on the 8th of June, 1934, leaving Thomas his title and to continue his work with a trust set up and run by trustees. The trust funded the building of the memorial flats and many other projects close to James's heart. The flats were built at Tynemouth on the site of the old Napoleonic barracks, which housed about a thousand troops. After the Napoleonic War, the land was sold to the Duke of Northumberland and renamed Percy Square. The groundworks to build paths and stairs up to the hillside to the flat started around 1930, using labour from men on the dole, who were given three days' work per week. They also built the tow wall, using small trains running from the fish key sand, supplying them with materials. The flats and nursery were designed by Lieutenant Colonel A.K. Tasker and Bolton-born consulting architect Charles Holden, who was famous for building London's first skyscraper, 55 Broadway, Westminster, and most of the London Underground stations. The flats were started in 1934 and were built by Stanley Miller Construction of Newcastle, although he was born in North Shields, and were completed in December 1938, which was four months ahead of schedule, at an approximate cost of £105,000. With the onset of war almost certain, the whole building was made of non-combustible material, with integrated air raid shelters using over one million bricks and a thousand tonnes of concrete. The 135 flats, some one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedroom, were fully fitted with beds, cookers, washers, fridges, etc., including gas and electric and hot and cold running water. The rent for a one bedroom flat was five shillings and ten pence. Two bedroom flats were six shillings and seven pence. Three bedroom flat was seven shillings and three pence. The clock tower stands 40 feet above the building and contains a single flat. The clock face is 12 foot 6 in diameter and was the largest in the north, much bigger than Big Ben in London. A separate annex was built for the newly appointed housing superintendent, Miss Annie Reeve of North Shields, who was responsible for collecting rents and advising tenants on good flat keeping. A team of cleaners would keep the communal areas clean and tidy and free from rubbish. 
The closed drying area on the north side had 60 metal poles with strings for pegging out. There was also a pram cupboard for every flat. Communal rubbish chutes were fitted on every floor which emptied into a large bin store on the ground floor. On the 20th of December 1938, the first tenant, 65-year-old widow Mrs Elizabeth Weatherstone, moved into the flats with her three sons, two of which were deep-sea fishermen. On the day a reporter interviewed her, she was laying linoleum in one of the bedrooms with the help of her two sons. She explained she had lived in the slums in Union Street for over 30 years and was delighted to be chosen to live in the flats. In Union Street, she said, the rent was seven shillings and sixpence, and now it's only six shillings and sevenpence, with all the amenities she never had in the slums. She was tickled to death with the bathroom having never had one before, she also said she could wave to her sons from her balcony when they left the river to go to sea. A visit was made to the completed Memorial Nursery School by Lady Astor MP, benefactress to nursery schools all over England. She recommended that the children would be better off wearing sandals for school instead of boots or shoes. The sandals would be better for playing in. Lady Astor planned to visit as many nurseries as possible in the area after seeing St James Knott's Memorial Nursery to upgrade to the same standard. The dream of James Knott to get rid of the slums where seafarers lived on the banks of the quayside and into decent housing was completed by the start of World War II and have stood the test of time. Sadly, he never saw the flats completed. His legacy lives on with the wonderful one million brick building overlooking the town.